My name is Mira. I am Yonsei, or fourth generation Japanese American. My grandpa Taku and his family was incarcerated at Tule Lake. It may not be obvious to you right now, but all of these objects have something in common. Let's go back in time and talk about these objects and their stories. This desk belonged to Tacoma's Nihongo Gakko, or Japanese language school. This school was started in 1911. As with many other cities, Tacoma's Japanese language school was the heart of its Japanese American community. I'm descended from four Japanese immigrants who came to the United States in the early 1900s. Uh, one of them came alone in 1905, and the other one came somewhere after 1906. Japanese people were barred from citizenship and prevented from owning land, subject to laws that did not apply to the other immigrants. These Nisei worked toward obtaining legal and civil rights, starting businesses, establishing community organizations, and representing their concerns in the court system. But in May 1942, during World War II, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, Tacoma's Japanese language school was forced to close by the federal government. I remember my mother taking us ice skating downtown Seattle. And on the way home, she was driving and happened to see the newspaper boys selling the Sunday Times. And she gasped. Headlines read, Japs bomb Pearl Harbor. And so she drove home very upset, but did not say at all what was wrong to my sister and I. Pearl Harbor was uh, devastating for both families. My own parents were teenagers at the time, and that's when the time that you are trying to separate yourself from your parents and, and find your own way, and to have it crushed by being thrown into uh, basically an institution had an impact during their whole life. My father's family uh, settled here in Seattle. My grandfather got married, brought his wife here, and they had four children. They were evacuated to uh, the Piaf Assembly Center, not far from here, and they went to Minidoka in Idaho. Uh, my mother's family uh, had lived in several different locations, probably eight different cities before World War II in California, but they were evacuated from Sacramento and they went into Walerga a Relocation Center and they were sent to Tule Lake with the families of two of my grandfather's brothers. And uh, after the infamous loyalty questionnaire, their families were separated and my mother's family was sent to Heart Mountain, Wyoming. On February 19, 1942, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066. This order authorized the military to forcibly remove anyone of Japanese descent from designation zones on the West Coast. Japanese American people were only allowed to bring what they and their families could carry with them to the camps. This suitcase belonged to Henry Hashimoto, who lived in Tacoma. He was 10 years old. We weren't told about the war or why we were going to camp. We were told that we were going camping because I saw my mother and father packing things up and I was so excited because I love to go camping. And I was thinking of the hot dogs and the marshmallows and how much fun. And then my mother said, and you may take one toy. Of course, I'm going to take Teddy, my favorite. He was very comforting to have somebody to hold and hug and 
And that's what he meant a lot. On the bus, on the way to Pialop, although I was very happy to go camping, I happened to notice my father's face and he was staring straight ahead. And then I saw a big tear come down his cheek and I knew something was wrong. They never did explain where we were going, but I do remember when we did get to camp, two soldiers opened the gate and they had rifles and the bus went in and then they closed the gate. Japanese American people were incarcerated in 10 concentration camps. Pat's family, like Henry's, went to Minidoka, where most Washington families of Japanese descent were incarcerated. In my family, there was my mother and my father and my sister, Diane, who was three years younger, and me, I was eight. I wasn't aware we weren't returning back home. I was just aware of how new the camp was, the fences around the camp, the, the guard towers, and then we were shown our um, room in the barrack and how we had to uh, take our cots and um, try to make it as comfortable as we could. On August 6th, 1945, the United States detonated a nuclear bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, on August 9th, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. The resulting death and destruction was unprecedented, and on August 15, 1945, Japan surrendered, ending the Second World War. By the end of 1945, all but one of the camps had closed and Japanese Americans looked for a return to the lives they had left behind. But those lives and places had changed. Families had lost many of their belongings, and in some cases, the land that they had worked on for decades. There were not always places to return to. Many communities didn't want Japanese Americans to return. My father tried to buy a house, and the neighbors in that particular area complained and created a protest with garden tools and shovels and brakes and that was a very bad experience because my father could not buy that house. Japanese Americans began the process of rebuilding their communities. While they weren't always able to regain their lives that were taken from them, they tried hard to forge new bonds, but their experiences in camp were not forgotten. Camp for a child is often associated with something fun, like summertime, like games, picnics, things like that. But when I would look at the faces of the people in my family who were talking about camp, they were uncomfortable, their eyes often shifted, and they never got into what it was. It seemed like they were trying to perhaps spare their children. But as I grew up, it became evident that my parents and maybe these other Japanese Americans could not leave the room without knowing if there was someone in the room who had shared their experience. And meanwhile, at school, the library, everywhere, there wasn't anything about a camp. Today, Japanese Americans commemorate February 19th, the date that Executive Order 9066 was signed, as the Day of Remembrance, or DOR. The first national DOR was held in Puyallup as a caravan from Seattle to the place where Camp Harmony was located. I attended the first Day of Remembrance. I wasn't involved in the planning but uh, I was at the University of Washington from 1973 to 1977, and uh, it was there that I learned that there was going to be a gathering uh, in Seattle to commemorate uh, the evacuation to the Puyallup Assembly Center around the Thanksgiving period in 1978. 
Japanese American activists worked together to ensure that their voices would be heard. Their efforts led to the creation of the Commission of Wartime Relocation and Interment of Civilians in 1980 by President Jimmy Carter. This commission studied the effects of incarceration on the Japanese American community. Those who had been incarcerated during the war and their family members testified about the long term impacts of the camps. I ended up、uh, agreeing to testify in front of the congressional hearings because about two years earlier, my folks had joined a group of people. Who had decided to found a chapter of JCL on Lake Washington. And it was particularly significant for me because my folks had avoided this sort of interaction, getting together with other people, and certainly not to talk about citizenship rights. In many ways, it was an extraordinary situation that deserved the support of their child. Unlike many of the persons whose testimony you will hear, I was never in camp. I'm a Sansei, a third generation American of Japanese descent, born 13 years after the Executive Order 9066. But that order, with its far reaching consequences, has touched my life, and the oppression it has left with me is what I want to share with you. I felt that. Like the first day of remembrance. This is kind of like making history because they're getting a chance to be on the record. I didn't have a compelling story about how I rode the bus or how I felt having to leave everything that I left behind, but every day of my life, I had been around people who were still coming out. And so I felt that I could write about that. On August 10th, 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act. This act included an apology letter, funding for public education, and financial restitution for still living people who had been incarcerated. Seventy-five years have passed, and now hundreds of Japanese Americans visit these sites where our ancestors were incarcerated. We not only visit these sites to honor our ancestors. But we also connect things happening in our history today to make sure things like these don't happen again.